Well, thank you all for joining us for this event. My name is Bill Leggett, and I'm a bookseller at Powell's Books. Before we begin, I want to encourage you to check out our lineup of upcoming virtual events by visiting our website at powells.com. And please consider following us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. One of the many events we're looking forward to is Kim Johnson in conversation with E.B. Zaboy on Sunday, September 20th. And they'll discuss their new books, This Is My America and Punching the Air. Mm -hmm. Please consider following us again on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And if you haven't already done so, sign up for our weekly events email at powells.com. But right now, we're honored to welcome Rob Bell in conversation with the band Joseph about Rob's book, Everything is Spiritual, Who We Are and What We're Doing Here. Mm. Mm. Rob Bell is a New York Times bestselling author of 10 books, including Velvet Elvis, Drops Like Stars, and Love Wins. And these books have been translated to 25 languages. He's toured with Oprah Winfrey, been profiled in The New Yorker, and in 2011, Time Magazine named him one of the 100 most influential people in the world. And he also, oh, wow. performed, yeah, he also performs <laughs> at Largo, a comedy and music club in Los Angeles. And Rob's book, Everything is Spiritual, is a brief history of how ideas about creation, love, and connection shaped the author and can shape every one of us. It explores the wonder that comes from embracing where and who you come from discovering in the wounds and regrets of life an invitation to expand, much like the universe has been doing for 13 billion years. And Rob Bell is joined in conversation by the band Joseph. Joseph is comprised of sisters Megan Klausner, mm -hmm. Allison Klausner, and Natalie Klausner Shetman, who formed the band in 2013 and named it after the town in Eastern Oregon where their grandpa Joe grew up. And since then, they have been recording and performing music all over the world. And their new EP titled Trio Sessions Volume 1 is available now. The event will also include an audience Q&A, so please use the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen if you'd like to ask a question. If someone has typed a question that you'd also like to hear the answer, please consider clicking the thumbs up button as well. And most importantly, please consider supporting both Rob Bell and Powell's by purchasing a copy of the book, Everything is Spiritual. A link to buy the book will be shared in the chat this evening. So Rob, Megan, Allison, and Natalie, it's an honor to welcome you all today, and thank you for joining us. Have a wonderful event. Woo! Thanks, Thanks for Bill. having us. My pleasure. Hi, Joseph friends. Hi, everybody Hello. watching. Hello. Hi. We can't see you, but you're close to our hearts. <laughs> oh, how fun okay. is this? Wow. It's so fun. <laughs> Congratulations on the release of this book. Thank Seltzer you. Seltzer Waters. Thank Seltzer you. Waters. Like you guys, as soon as there was no touring, as soon as there was no events, as soon as the world changed and the publisher said, well, plan B would be some sort of virtual book tour where you'd be in conversation with people. Amazing. And that little thing in Rob Bell's head went, who would I love to read this book Aww. and tell me what they think? And it was like you guys. We're like right there, boom, obviously Joseph. And now we're here. <laughs> and uh, now we're here. Now we're here. Yes. And so I'm grateful. so honored. I'm so, I'm so grateful you would do this. We are blown I gotta away. say, I've been listening to most of my books on audiobooks, and this book, your book is um, first book I've actually read through with my eyeballs in like over a year. And it's, it was really nice. <laughs> it was great. You can see why people have been doing this for about a couple thousand years at yeah. some level. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, oh, man. Well, hey. first, I know we all want to just like gush about it too because it's just so good. And we all mm. genuinely were like, we all had a moment uh, where we were meeting about it yesterday. And like, we were like, I cried on this part. And oh my gosh, this part totally moved me. And yeah. we were like taking notes and all that stuff. And so. Um, but we have lots of questions too. So. Oh my goodness. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. Um, I was Ali or Nat, do you want to just start in on that? Your question? Yep. Um, yeah. so releasing something is a feeling and, um, I can't imagine what it's like to release a book. We have released things before. Um, does this release feel any different or similar than the other releases that you've done? Different, totally different. Mm -hmm. I think it's the 11th book and it feels like starting over. 
Wow. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it wasn't, it isn't just the book. It's this feeling, I think in the past, I released something. There were times when I would finish writing a book and the next day start writing the next one. Mm. Like just keep making stuff. But this book right away, it was like it wanted to have a relationship. Mm. Um, it feels like that. It, it mm -hmm. was like we're going, because I would put a book out, okay, what, what do you do for the promotion of the book? And then you move on. But this, mm. this was like, no, relax. And mm. you're going to be with this book for a while. Mm. How like long a, was it? Like a friend or like, a, it's different than anything I've ever made. Mm. Very, 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 yeah, very different. Mm. Like just follow this around. And actually I sent it to my friend, Liz Gilbert, and she had mm. called and was like, you're going to have a different relationship with this than anything you've ever made. Mm. Wow. wow. And it, was, it got like, it, it got like, real, we were both like, Whoa, huh. And yeah, <laughs> she said it. It was like it had given me, it owes me nothing writing mm. it. Wow. There were so many moments in writing it that whole things made sense or mm -hmm. there were so many tears writing it that when I mm. finished it I was like there uh, that it could we could be done now mm. if anybody were to ever read this that would just be like an added it's like you all when you write a song you're like I love this song is like it's mm -hmm. already given you a gift mm -hmm. yeah and then if somebody else were to hear it is just frosting on the cake that's yeah. just bonus yeah. absolutely Pure grace. did that feel yeah different from the other books that you've written in that way to like what is the how is that are the other books more just like parts of everything that you feel or is you know it because it is? this one's so much more personal or well I'd be interested if you all can relate to this I came from this I think I came it's like almost it's hard to give it language I came from a world where the truth capital T was the thing and then life, the story, flesh and blood was like an example of the truth. Like it was right. like a, an illustration. Mm -hmm. So you're always like pushing it off of yourself. Um, but there's no other way that you've experienced other than th this, than your heart, your soul, mm -hmm. your body, your, your you-ness. Right. So right. Something about this was just owning every square inch of the story. Ooh. Yeah and the story is the truth mm. um and and like where i came from like a the worst criticism of a sermon was ah oh, that was just a bunch of stories um, because it was this almost like abstract does that sound familiar like yeah. abstract yeah. thing that you're sort of arranging your mental furniture around mm -hmm. and i had a, a series of experiences a year and a half ish ago that just completely turned everything it's like I, my head sank into my heart mm. and it was like it was like the heart said to the head you you work for me mm. um, and it opened me up and it it just um and and suddenly i could see minds talking to minds when people were stuck in their mind like <laughs> um it was like a sinking down into a fullness of life that i couldn't explain and then that took me into my own story like mm. <laughs> So this was another book of big ideas and suddenly it, what, it didn't work. And then one day, my grandma used to keep cash in her bra. I love it. That story about the porch and was like, mm. wait, that's what happened to me. All this right. stuff that I do, all this stuff that I talk about, mm. all the Rob Bellness actually started way back then with these awkward, fascinating, humbling stories the book is mostly stories about things not working out or me falling down a flight of stairs <laughs> at some level you know what I mean <laughs> and I was like now that's actually now that's interesting I'm sure with you guys yeah. you've, met, uh, you've met we all of us we've met enough of our heroes and mm. how they conquered the latest mountain isn't as interesting yeah. as them going <laughs> oh yeah there was no money and we were stuck in Fresno for four yeah. days and you're like that's the story I needed we only yep. sold a third. We only sold a third of the tickets, and everybody lost money. And yet we went out and did the best show ever. Yeah, those are the stories that I needed to hear. I've always needed. Yeah, absolutely. Not how awesome yep. and how easy it was. That doesn't help me. Right. Mm -hmm. That makes That's me feel a, bad. 
I just make exactly. you feel bad. Love, right. I love that you, even in the book, that you kind of had that uh, moment where you talked about how you wrote the book. Yeah. And that yeah. was so interesting <laughs> for me because I, I love that it, I don't know, it made me feel like we were just chatting or something. You were like, yeah. oh, yeah, so you finished the book. Like, this is kind of how it came about. I was like, oh my God, I'm still reading the book and I get to be inside of how it <laughs> happened. Yeah. Yeah. I loved it. It was so yeah. weird. It was so weird. And, but I, it was so yeah, awesome. Good. good. Because I started to realize, like the story about Father Jack in Ireland in the mm. Rose Garden, when he says, you just give your gift. And then yep. the, box, yep. the boxing story, and then the quantum physics story, and then the Amazon. I started to realize, wait, those stories are all a section even though there are no chapters and there's no table mm, of contents. Right. I was I like, know. wait, those, those stories are all talking to each other. They co they're connected, but I don't really logically in a linear fashion show you how they're all connected. I just yeah. bunch them all together and there's yeah. something happening. So like right away, Ali, I was like, okay, this book isn't, there's these disjointed moments that mm. are actually how life feels. Yeah. Mm. And then suddenly when the book starts talking about itself and then at the end suddenly we're talking about how a baby gets made. <laughs> oh. um, right. So I was like, I oh, it's the stops and starts and the lurches and the repeats and the circling yeah. back. Mm. So then it started to become the form. The form is reflecting how life actually feels. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Totally. And that was the really that was the really interesting moment mm. when I was like oh, this is coming out. There's a feeling here that is how life actually feels. A little chaotic, a little frenetic, sad, yeah. joyous, but yeah. then something right below the surface, like a little pulse right below mm -hmm. the surface that just never, like spirit, right below the surface, yeah. always inviting right. you. Whatever it is, hey, there's something going on in this. Mm -hmm. More going on here. Come on, my man. Pay attention. Hmm. You just, You just nodded to so many of our other questions <laughs> <laughs> so okay here here's the net you, you mentioned this how father jack said to you just give the gift surrender the rest Ooh, yeah so huge 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 in a world of like what we're doing is we are doing both we're like making something to offer both ourselves and everyone else and we're also having to be privy to all of the numbers and is it working and can we whatever you know and so i'm really i was really curious as you were talking about that um do you feel like that mentality comes naturally to you now or do you find yourself kind of like straying off into striving and trying to prove something and then you have to course correct and like if it does come naturally like do you have a rich any rituals that help you like stay in that mindset which is like okay i'm giving the gift i'm surrendering the rest yeah great question it's it's like what you lead with so the so it's almost like you have to begin with what's a what what kind of life do we want to live and within mm -hmm. that what does what do you, what songs do you want to make and then mm -hmm. what's not home enough what's home too much there's a, there's a there's <laughs> there's a rhythm question always if we go too long and too hard or too whatever that's not life, but also like you're like when you all are in a room playing your song, something happens, and if you were to stay home forever, yeah. <laughs> you wouldn't be true in some weird way to who you are. Mm. Yeah. Um, and then I actually think it's most helpful to think about the long. I'm I'm going to do this for a long time because. Yeah. And it might take on different shapes and forms and chapters. Mm. So, the like the numbers will probably ebb and flow. That's okay. Mm -hmm. That's okay. Um, the, the modern market ideology became addicted to up and to the right. Like, <laughs> yeah, you have, to, right. you have to do always do bigger. Um, mm -hmm. Would you rather do a bigger room with some empty seats or a smaller room that's packed? Yes, right. 100%. So that, what's fascinating yeah. is you would trade that you'll you would just make that trade any and then other times you're like let's swing for the fences and see what happens yeah oh, yeah yeah um so it's almost like you just make peace with 
Mm -hmm. This thing is always going to be moving targets. So let's just grit, get rid of the target and Oof. just do the moving. Ooh, 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 ooh. Do you know what you I mean? Did it again. I have to write that down. Um, <laughs> Natalie's like writing songs on the side. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, I think that's. Mm -hmm. And then um, the last thing that really strikes me is it's all a part of a whole. So mm -hmm. uh, at some level, all the details matter as well. Like all the details are all part of it. This, this, yeah. I think it's much more because I'm a fair bit older than you all. There was this, like, I'm not selling out, man. I don't like pretending like the logistics don't matter. Like, if you're really yeah. an artist, you don't care, which mm -hmm. actually splits right. up the world into mm. the stuff on stage and then the details. Uh, the great ro artist Robert Irwin would paint and sand the back of the painting which no one would ever see because he wow. knew in, in the gallery, oh. people in the gallery would feel the wholeness and integrity mm. of the painting on the wall. Oh Interesting. my, that's amazing. So the idea that like you guys just mm. sing your songs on a stage and then all the other stuff is just detail somebody. Um, right. Actually how you spent that day and, and how you went about it is all part of it. Oof, wow. You know what I mean? You begin- That's so good. Uh, how you do anything is how you do everything. So I think that mm -hmm. becomes, yeah, feel free to type, Natalie. Yeah, uh, I was like <laughs> resisting the urge. I think that's my, I think my friend, I think my friend Dan Klein, I think I can, <laughs> you can credit my friend Dan on that. Um, so I, I think that's part of it is your learning that it's all a whole. Mm -hmm. um, whenever people ask me questions about so good. their art or their work or their business, I'm all much more interested in what you have for breakfast. Mm. Um, is there a lot of junk in the backseat of your car? Yeah. Like, let's yeah. just start with try doing like living mm. like a, a clean, disciplined True. life of integrity in the most, what you think are the trivial things. Because actually mm -hmm. that's, everything else is simply building on that. Wow. Yeah. Oof. Yep. That was not the answer I was expecting. <laughs> That's great. I know. I, I honestly was expecting something of like, you know, just be above it. Just have this like higher sort of perspective. But I love that you brought it down to earth and you're like, it actually is in the, the junk in the back of your car and what you ate for breakfast. Like, absolutely. Ooh, that's so good. Yeah. And in some ways, I bet like your next album starts to take shape and then, okay, what does a tour look like? Mm -hmm, I bet yeah. if you all together listen to heart, I bet it announces itself pretty quickly. Mm. What'll it look like? Okay, let's do that. And then the next one will, the next, okay, what are we doing now? Okay, mm. what does this one look like? I think, we do, I think we do every B market everywhere. Okay, I think this one is a little more <laughs> yeah. sparse and intentional. Okay. Yeah, um, right. It'll mm -hmm. tell you. Mm. Wow. Okay, Al. Al, we're taking next. away. Oh my God. Okay. This is just a really stupid question that I had to ask because one of my <laughs> takeaways from the book <laughs> that I couldn't stop thinking about was that um, part where you talked about you had just, um, you know, kind of quit being a pastor and you go and you're doing a speaking gig um, and you said you midway through you're like having a hard time knowing what to say and that feels really weird and you realize I'm wearing a suit and I never wear a suit and I'm wearing <laughs> and I'm wearing a sweatshirt under the suit Sweater. why am I wearing this yes. yeah. <laughs> so I was like that felt so relatable to me and um and so funny and I was mostly just wondering if you know if you feel like you finally found what you know, your day-to-day -day kind of work <laughs> outfit is now, or if it's a constant change, or <laughs> if you've stayed with the suit sweater vibe. <laughs> I love it. I couldn't I get the image it. out of my head, you know? Right, because <laughs> love wins comes out, and then all this stuff, and then eventually it's like, oh, this chapter's <laughs> over, it's time to leave, and we move to California, and then right. Uh, a couple mm -hmm. and then I like for a year I probably didn't speak or do anything publicly and then I get this offer to come speak in New York and mm -hmm. what do I wear so I wear this suit <laughs> so weird 
like this suit <laughs> with a sweater under it. What? Who am I? And I'm standing there on stage, like sweating. Like who, you've been doing this for a long time. Oh, this is that was the one where I was given 45 minutes to speak. Uh oh, Meg's glitching. Uh oh, the Mon Montana. Glitching. We lost Mon Montana. <laughs> Was that She'll Megan? come back. She looks yeah. like she's having a nice time, though. <laughs> she really. She'll come back. Oh, she no. loved that story. Yeah, and Allie, oh, I no. wanted. Oh, oh. <laughs> Migs, mute yourself for a sec. She's good. Okay. She really left us. She's way oh, out. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> I hope all of you who are watching this are enjoying. Megan is in Montana, and apparently. <laughs> Oh, There's God. a windstorm or something. Oh, gosh. Okay, now she's gone. Okay, yeah, I'll Allie, just tell her. Hey, Allie, it's funny that you mention that because I'll often meet people who have some sense that a chapter is ending and a new chapter in their life is starting and they know it's time to wrap this up and do the next thing, but they want guarantees. Like, mm -hmm. I need to know if the next thing's going to go smooth. I need to know oh, if the yeah. next thing's all sort of nailed down. And it's like, you don't get that. Mm -hmm. Um so you just follow it. Chris and I sometimes say the, the cloud, the cloud moved, you know, mm. like a very old Testament, the cloud moved. All I know is the cloud moved, trying to go this way. Follow mm. the cloud. That's all you got. Um, yeah. But I love I, that moment. They'd given me 45 minutes to speak and like 25 minutes in, I'd run out of things to talk about, which had never happened. And I'm like, I thought That's I so crazy. knew how to do this. <laughs> what am just, <laughs> Yeah, I just wanted everybody to feel that, like, in between, oh, you left yeah. this, you're headed into this new thing, but you don't yeah. really know what it is, and all of the, like, ways that you're vulnerable to, uh, mm. you've really lost the plot now, and... Ooh. Oh, my God. I loved that. I felt like you talking about that in between, the liminal. Yeah. That, that was, like, we have so many stories of outcomes. I mean, every movie plot ever is has a beginning, middle, and end. And I know you've talked a lot about the middle. You had the whole series on broadcast about that. And it's like to hear your personal experience of the awkwardness of yes. the in between. Yes. Is so. Yeah. I mean, it's you know what you said in the book. It's like the personal is cosmic. Like it is both so so zoomed in, and it's also like. A part of all things and I felt that so so much yeah hi Me. Megan <laughs> you back <laughs> <laughs> oh you're muted, no, you're muted. <laughs> <laughs> communicating in 2020 hear me yeah now yes. we can oh okay, my I don't goodness. know what happened but that was wild <laughs> You could tell, um, like, the four of us have had enough things go wrong on stage that whatever this is, 240 people are with us, and we're not even slightly rattled <laughs> by things completely melting down. Oh we're like, my yeah, we've God. been here. Ooh, we've been we, here. Have, oh we have been here. <clears throat> oh, um, my words. Okay. okay is it, if you want, you can ask your question next. Yeah. Okay, great. Okay, so I was, so we, we grew up, uh, uh, as you know Christian and whatever and I feel like we we were taught like the bible at it like a textbook you know and I feel a lot of trauma from the way that we were taught it and I found it really interesting how you referenced scripture and you talked about it so joyously and like wow mm. this is so beautiful and like oh my gosh it talks about like how we should take about or how we should take care of the earth and all of these things that I was like, man, I've just never read that mm -hmm. slash like never felt that, but I have wanted to. Uh, um, yeah. So And especially I think in my life right now, I'm like, man, I think I would, I could enjoy, I would like to read some scripture now, but I'm just like so traumatized that like even touching mm -hmm. it is like, oh my God, yes. there's just a God that wants to send us all to hell. So right. I'm wondering, like, right, right. do you have trauma with it that you, like, are mm. deal with when you're reading it, or do you just see the, like, goodness and that, do you know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. Because, like, like um, my wife, Kristen, would have pretty much no interest for that very reason. Yeah. For yeah. her, the Bible was wrapped up in a world that 
basically told her her voice wasn't was second yeah among other things so for her so like it's just it's aligned with a whole system of things Mm -hmm. there's like no mm -mm, i'm out yep Mm -hmm. um i didn't i mean my i like we went to church growing up so i'd sort of heard you know bible stories Mm -hmm. for i think fortunately for me I didn't, I mean, I went to seminary where it is kind of like a textbook, but it was such an academic setting. It didn't have some of the same imprinting like you're talking about where it gets right. like, mm-hmm. like a kid is like, the, like what you're, expl- what you're articulating is what, what you were taught from the Bible is the universe is an unsafe place. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm. Like that's a, an existential psychosocial thing that was, mm-hmm. you picked up, which is. The universe is a place of lack and scarcity and you are yeah. not safe and yeah. love is not the engine of the whole thing. Right. Well, no wonder, no wonder you would not want anything to do with that. That doesn't take you anywhere interesting. Mm. What happened right. to me is I got a job in a church in my early twenties cause that's what you did at that time. Mm. And so I had to actually read it and I kept going, wait, wait, this is like the Hebrew prophets their whole thing is if you have a widening gap between rich and poor right whole society is going to implode so i would suddenly be like why isn't anybody talking or almost Mm. every time jesus is asked a question he responds with a question well right this is the opposite of brainwashing Mm. like literally the first century rabbinic model was you're gonna have to think for yourself so how do you interpret it Um, right so i i just suddenly was like like a like a conspiracy (laughs) <laughs> for me it was like how come nobody knows this because this yeah. is really interesting and helpful and dangerous and all the stuff that we're talking about now mm, um, right if you can read lots of sections of the bible and not see implicit critique of the american industrial military complex you're not reading the bible like how do you not Mm. It just, it, so, so it was like uh, either the thing is lost so just go be zen just go mm-hmm. do something else you know what i mean it was like or try and like tell people they missed all the gold mm-hmm. um, right i had some that's just, how i felt i had some moments like 25 26 27 like i'm uncovering this stuff how come it's all over history and yet this particular american scene is cut off from its own roots. It thinks yeah. it's like the one true path and it's actually profoundly cut off from its own tradition. Um, like Celtic Christianity in the second century, 1800 years ago, central to Celtic Christianity was the sacred feminine. Mm. If you don't have the sacred masculine, the sacred feminine in this beautiful dialectic harmony, then you don't have you know what I mean? Like, wait, yeah, that, yeah. that's yeah. we are right now reclaiming the sacred feminine as like a new idea when 1800 years ago. So that's what happened to me is just, yeah, either just it's either lost, so you just go do something else, or I somehow had this weird sense like, now nah, I think I'm gonna reclaim it, mm. see where it happens. That's yeah. so beautiful. I feel like I have that similar inclination, but I'm just like, oh my god, trauma. No, it's totally normal. No, I totally, totally get it. Um, yeah. Mm. Because, and for some people, the, the tradition, it just, the, the water got too muddied. Um, right. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And so you just need, and maybe it, sometimes I think the answer is just, you just need more time away. Yeah. You know, walk, walk away and then you maybe come back sometime or, or yeah. you only read, like, for example, there's a book called The Five Books of Miriam by a Jewish scholar named Ellen Frankel. And it's a, it's a female commentary on the first five books of the Bible. And it's, she invents Lilith. She in, has these characters. She invents all this fascinating dialogue. It's called Midrash. And you would, it's like a brilliant feminist reading of the first five books. Wow. From like a very informed. So you would read it and be like, wait, you know I mean? The stuff they do with Eve is like, mm. Um, so there is stuff that I think you, mm. you could you would find really really compelling. Um, Interesting. Might might help with some of the post trauma, which is totally normal. Yeah. Say the name of the book again. 
the What's five books of Miriam, because the, the first five books, five books have always called the five books of Moses. So she calls mm. the five books of Miriam, his sister. Write um, it down. Ellen Frankel. Uh, mm. F-R-A-N-K-E-L. That's the kind of thing that you might read and go, wait a second, there's an entirely different way to see this whole thing. Oh, yeah. Mm. There it is. I want Someone, it. There it is nice. in the bottom of our screen. Oh, nice. <laughs> Perfect. That's a great Thanks. question. Um, okay, so we're going to be taking questions here in a second. Moderating. Um, <laughs> and, but I really, I feel like in my experience of this book, and it was yeah. so, I was telling the girls when we were reading it and we were texting about it, I started just like copying down things that I was like, I don't want to forget this. And then I realized I was just copying the whole book. So um, <laughs> I was like, okay. But the most like, you know, staggering piece to me is the indomitable onwardness that you talk about. And that phrase is just like so alive and makes so much sense when you break it down to the particles making up the atoms, making up yes, the molecules, yes, making yes. up the cells. And I am, I am lit up. And I saw you do this particular uh, guerrilla theater piece in <laughs> Spokane um, years ago with Chris. And I, this just like, I've never stopped thinking about it. It, make, it makes everything fall into place for me. So the idea that becoming is the direction of the universe, as you said, and how we all come together to like, we connect to form like more complexity and bigger some, and bigger. Some new layer the universe hasn't seen before. Oh, uh, I, right. Right. and like, as I was reading, I'm so like, you know, just like lit up by this whole concept and I'm still in my brain going, but why do the bad things happen? Even though at the beginning of your, the book, you're like, yeah, that question's not so interesting to me. Like what now is really interesting to me. And I find myself still asking that. And then I go back and I see you answer it in all of these different ways. So this very long question is really just leading to, you say the question is what now? And you also say this thing about, can something new come from even this? And I'm just, I'm amazed by that. And I just want to know, like, do you have a what now marching order to how we help the system work better for all of us? Or is it kind of like you said, like, you used to see your position as being like having the last word, but now you have the first. So you don't want to give us like the answers. You just want us to like figure it out. But do you have any specific like what now action items? What a great question. Um, <laughs> that's a great question. In some way, in some ways, um, everybody wakes up in their own way. So mm -hmm. at one level, you're correct. Correct. Every everybody will have a slightly different contribution at some level. So any hard and fast, this is what everybody should do. Um, so you think about like uh, my dad was a judge. So he woke mm -hmm. up in the morning and put on a suit and actual wingtips and went to an office with a leather satchel. And what was interesting about being a judge is he had this very old school, noble, I am a public servant. And my mm -hmm. service to the greater good is to administer justice. Mm -hmm. um, so think about when I say the word government employee, civil servant or politician, do you instantly think of somebody with a sacred noble sense of service to the greater good? Mm. So you could just start with, and I actually think you're going to see this, a, a, a new world of people rise up who see, mm. um, and even the tragedy of the past six months, mm. competence actually matters and selfless surface for the greater good actually saves lives literally yeah. um so yeah. i i mm. so there's an example where i think you're going to see and i'm noticing when i'm out people saying like yeah my friends all said i should run for city council so i did mm. whoa uh, like teachers and mm. nurses and small business owners and moms and dads like instead of just sending more links on facebook 
of mm -hmm. articles, like just going down to the city center and getting involved. Mm -hmm. So that would be an example where there's a whole world of people who are really good at organizing stuff. And yeah. we actually need that. So when I say everything is spiritual, the sense that our shared life together is a sacred mm -hmm. spiritual thing. Um, think about a good teacher. I think you're going to see a revolution in education because a good teacher is worth like mm -hmm. what a good teacher does and how a bad teacher, some new system will come. That's like the people who should be teaching should be teaching and the people who shouldn't let's help them do something else. Um, mm -hmm. That's cool. I, so I, I think that what has happened over the past, okay, here's the real thing that I think has happened over the past four years, this particular president has hijacked an entire party and mm -hmm. showed that the world is actually really malleable. Like somebody with no experience and no competence can charge in and mm -hmm. like make a mess of things. Well, that means the whole thing, the, the clay is softer than anybody wow. realized. Wow. And I think mm -hmm. what's going to happen is a world of people are going to realize this thing that we thought just existed and you yeah. just sort of deal with it is actually way, way more malleable. Mm. Um, Interesting. You know what I mean? What a perspective. <laughs> so <laughs> that's for me. Yeah, essentially mm -hmm. some level my work was oh, I'm, I want to go upstream and help people see like the larger playing field yeah. because that will work itself out in art and politics and business and education and healthcare and law. Mm. Um, that'll work itself out when, yeah. conscious, when consciousness is raised, when people become aware of greater connectivity, complexity, and inclusion, mm. it will endlessly filter down throughout all of our shared life together. So good. So, Ooh. Yeah, I think that's what's happening. Wow. I love that. Yep. yep. Well, should we take some questions, wow. guys? Yeah, let's You're, do it. I, do, one more, do one more Joseph question, because I love really? it. Really? Okay. <laughs> I want one more. Okay. Um, <laughs> I have my other question. Yeah, right? please. So, um, I was wondering, this book I thought was really interesting, because, you know, I went into it knowing we were going to be doing this interview. Mm -hmm. And so I was thinking the mm -hmm. whole time, like, okay, I, I like, what is this making me think? And what questions could I ask kind of? Mm -hmm. and it was so interesting because I think, honestly, I, I thought I would like have a lot of questions throughout the whole thing, but then I ended mm -hmm. up finding as I kind of went, uh, read through it, that it was like, I wasn't coming up with questions. I felt like it was answering a lot of questions that I had mm -hmm. does that make sense mm -hmm. <laughs> that um mm -hmm. that I was just kind of amazed and was like man this book is so I think pertinent to not you know to the world and to I think each of us girls individually mm -hmm. and I think yes. it's one of those books that um that although you're sharing a lot of your story you kind of say this in it um, how you can like see yourself and other people and they can yeah. see you and you and whatever. But um, this one, this book, especially, I was just like, this is, I think every single person could place themselves in this and, mm -hmm. and, and get questions answered somehow. Like, and the girls might, you know, found that in our thing um, in our mm -hmm. time that we were talking about it together. Um, but I guess I was just wondering, cause I walked away really not having that many questions because I just mm -hmm. was like, well, thank you, Rob Bell. I feel <laughs> like you have sent me it on. And yeah. Cause it, it really felt like you, I mean, that book and like really s moved me forward in a lot of the questions that I've been asking over and over. So I feel mm -hmm. kind of further on my journey after reading that. And I was curious, um, I'm sure you know, I know that you kind of talk about discovering your, um, the family history and kind of reliving all of that, but, um, was most of this stuff kind of just like already in your head when you were starting the book or were you discovering it kind of as you were writing it or was there anything kind of new that you learned, you know, as you're writing it that you, that answered some questions you had kind of been having on your journey? 
Does that make sense? That was yeah, like six questions great, in one. <laughs> that, no, that's a great question because I remember the section, uh, the loss that my dad experienced and how I grew up, there were people missing. I remember typing, oh, that's why the questions of suffering have never been that interesting because <sighs> I, I was born into a story where people were missing and there was no good explanation for it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That was like a, like a moment. Yeah. Oh, and then that woman who comes up to me and says, you're a mystic and they don't mm -hmm. know it yet. Right. Um, it was almost like this. Oh, once I was found the, like found the key, this song was in once I found the, mm -hmm. then, and then I would type a story, not knowing what was coming next and then say, well, what happened next? Yeah. In regards to everything is spiritual. Mm. And then whenever I got through what, and then what I learned. And then anytime mm. I got to the end of what I learned, well, what happened next? It was like these two questions. What happened next? What did you learn? And then mm. just trusted that at the end of the, and what I learned. And mm. then what happened next? That there would be something. Just mm. trusted there would be something at the end of that paragraph. Yeah, gosh. And then it became like a channel because we were on two, oh, Kristen and I and Violet and Preston came along, we we're on tour. So it was like some of it I was um, writing on tour in America. So I would write and then hear the last song play on the house before I went out, close this, this laptop I'm holding, walk out on stage, do the, mm -hmm. I guess that was the joy tour, do a two hour talk, walk back off stage, sit back down, open the laptop and keep typing. It was like a, like a, like a faucet. Wow. And then there's like pictures, there's pictures um, on a Sunday morning outside a laundromat in South London on the sidewalk, waiting for our laundry, just sitting there typing. And yeah. Kristen would be like, how are you typing on a train in Norway? <laughs> I was like, because it just is like a faucet. It was very, wow. very um, real experience. Mm. This is what happens next. <laughs> that's yeah. so awesome. I think that's so amazing to hear because you bring it back correct like there's such a struck even though it is i did i was feeling that faucet just like coming the whole time as i was yeah. reading it and i actually didn't know there were no chapters which I, that actually makes more sense because i didn't know if it was the actual form that you had sent us but yeah. now that you mention it that's perfect and i yeah. love how i like you start with death and loss and absence as a mm. presence and then you end with that and how it's so inextricably tied to life and how it's yeah. all happening at the same time and it's crazy to think that you were just going what's next and then it came back around in in the fullness of it at the end i i was i was falling at the end actually yeah um so I so said, special I was trying to, to me what'd so you say Allie? oh i said i was crying too <laughs> <laughs> so I, was, I was too actually i i actually the very end in the field in denmark when I typed mm. it and realized, oh, this is where the book ends. Um, I was like, oh my God, I can barely type this. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Oh, you so, feel uh, it. That translated. Oh I actually think the next, I think we tried as a culture, I think we tried cynicism. Everybody tried that. Nice job. Mm. Nice job, Brooklyn. Nice job, <laughs> mustaches. You know what I mean? We did that. <laughs> nice job, rolling of the eyes. I mm. actually think I, I think that the way forward is to open our hearts to each other. Oh, okay. It's the only way. It's the only way forward. And I think the answer to political polarization, political polarization is the inability to see yourself in someone else. Okay, come on. Okay, so, that makes me want to cry. Why do those people make such terrible decisions? Well, when you're filled with fear and you're uh, in a system of lack, did you make the best decisions? Um, it's like, the the muscles we actually are going to develop is how to see ourselves even in the person that we most can't see ourselves we're in there somewhere mm. um and i that's to me the next for me the next starting now starting the next few years however that works is inviting <laughs> to open our hearts to each other what's it like to be you what's it like oh, to be my. you what's it like what's it been like um yeah. i think it's the only way I think, actually, we were just talking, my boys and I, I like the word earnest. I think earnest is going to make a comeback. Natalie. Somebody, somebody who's doing something in the world, they're feeling something, they've given themselves to something, and they're just doing that. 
and they're not like standing at a distance going, I know this is kind of like, they're just doing it. They're just present in it. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, think I it's gonna, have no idea what that means. I know I'm back. like, I'm tearing <laughs> up because someone basically referenced that, that we were too earnest. And so, and we like internalized that in a way that was like, oh, yikes. So you just being like, I love that word earnest is like, yeah. whoa. <laughs> That's meaningful. Yeah. The person who told you you're too earnest was not talking about you. They were talking about how much pain they're in. If you, if you turn that around, that person was giving you data about what it's like to be them. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, my gosh. You're, you're too earnest is a statement of the pain they're in. Mm. Yeah, so be earnest. All right, a, therapy session. Like... <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah. Uh, okay. Do we get to Oh wait, yeah, questions. Cues? Questions. Yeah. Okay, Ming, are you I'm I'm looking through right now. It, okay. But either of you if you see one that's great. <clears throat> I someone had one right at the beginning that I thought was super good. Hold on. Who wins the About NBA? Your... Who wins the NBA finals? We're all in tears <laughs> and somebody's like, "Who wins the NBA finals?" <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. Lakers oh, and five for the record, but anyway. Oh, no. Okay, someone said something about your mind and your heart, and you you mentioned that. I thought it was so good. Hold on. What was that? Um. Okay. I have. There's one here. There. This one is from Craig Aldridge. It says oh, to all. We love Craig. We know Craig. To all, as people who have changed, evolved their work of a number of years and have taken it to audiences around the world. Have you noticed any striking differences in response? Oh, okay, I'm re reading it and it just moved. Okay, wait, where did it go? Okay, there it goes. In responses you get, <laughs> sorry. Um, so, okay, have you noticed any striking differences in responses you get to audiences around the world? And what do you think is the defining reason for that location? social economic status, the evolution of your work, something else? I'm actually shocked with the similarities around the world. Mm. I'm even shocked that Scotland, South Africa, Turkey, Brazil, the same jokes even. Wow. I was talking, I was talking wow. to an interpreter in Sao Paulo, Brazil, two years ago, and the crowd we were locked in on the most subtle weird stuff they were all like i, mm. I actually am constantly people are people that's how yeah yeah you have the same thing. i agree yep i, I think I so. find it stunning i find it stunning mm -hmm. i think it's really nice too because you know sometimes especially when you're touring so much you're all over the place um you can feel really far away from home and so when you get into an audience and it's and they're responding maybe similarly um to certain songs that people do in the states or you know whatever it may be it feels really comforting to be like oh yeah like you said we're all we're all humans everybody's human it doesn't yeah. matter you know what you think what you look like where you live it you know we're all we're all here together yeah that's Mm. that's what's been fascinating to me and i think it's fascinating to see people all waking up to certain things yeah um, even the countries like you bomb us we bomb you come on please right uh, right, right. Move past. um how our food comes from the earth and our care for the earth is um central to what it means to be human just like there's like a larger duh that just mm -hmm. across the board you see people going yes of course um I, I think it's endlessly fascinating. I remember in a Robcast, well, I think I told you this on the, when we hung out with you on the Robcast, but I remember when the election happened, I was just like, what's Rob going to say? I was just like waiting. I would check, I would literally check your Instagram and your Robcast be like, what's he going to say? I, I need some guidance. And then when you came, <laughs> when you came back in, you know, February or whatever, after your break, and you basically said, this moment is like acknowledging the wound that already exists. I'm paraphrasing. I don't remember your actual language. And you were like, we have to like reopen the wound before we can heal. And mm -hmm. I, I have, I've clung to that, like throughout this whole experience, especially this year. 
you know, it's like, hello, racism, like what, you yeah. know, like yeah. there is, there's this like gaping, Chris and I are watching the West Wing and in, in, in this episode in like 2008 and, and one of the characters is like, we need to have a resurgence of the civil rights movement in this country. That's like in 2000, you know, like, and yes. Yes. anyway, just to say like, that's happening, you know, like, yeah, to, to just say if that's exactly what's happening. Like Absolutely. I cannot find the question of this person who asked you about your mind and your well, heart, but. I'll ask another one because this one has the most thumbs up on it. Um, yeah, so perfect. everybody wants to know this Love one. Love that. Um, it says, Dr. Hillary McBride, and they Ooh. said, Love her. Love her. Um, said, tweeted, tweeted a really profound question earlier this week, and I'd love to know your answers. What do you wish someone would ask you right now? Mm. Oh, you know, this is once in a while an interviewer will say this. Is there anything you wished I would have asked you? Yeah. No, I would have said it. <laughs> <laughs> I always find that a fascinating question. No, um, mm -hmm. I, would, I would just say it. I wouldn't wait. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I'm much yeah. more interested in the person that I'm interacting with. <laughs> than making sure that they get my talking points. Um. Yes. That is <laughs> a question nice. that gets asked a lot too, because we've had that a lot too, and I'm always like, no, nothing. I start. But, I I did start answering it just so I wouldn't like. I just started answering it when people say, "What is the question you wish the person would have asked?" I always just say, "Are we having tacos and then going surfing, or surfing and then tacos?" <laughs> That's so ridiculous. It's so dumb. Buddy. But it like just. <laughs> as, I as wish we were doing that right now. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Megan or Natalie, do you guys okay. have something? Let's go. Couple more. Um, couple more. Okay. Mm, mm, mm. There's that. Get um, that thing. Okay. I'll look too. Oh, here it is. I found it. Okay. Nice. You mentioned your heart being the one in charge over your mind. And uh, Caitlin McCabe wants to know, was there an event or something in particular, Rob, that made your heart take control of your head? <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, almost like a, a sense that I was coming to the end of something and I couldn't quite name it. Mm -hmm. But um, I noticed that the... I was noticing it in 2000, by the end of 2018, I just kept noticing, oh, I come from this tradition. Mm. Even the Protestant Reformation, it, it, it located things so much more. And what do you think? What do you believe? And I, mm. I suddenly could see the timeline. I came out of this tradition and then I tried to be its best son. You know what I mean? Mm. And, yeah. then, and, and then infuse it with heart. Um, and that there was some, I could feel it in almost in my body. There was some new thing happening that I couldn't think my way out of. There was some next place mm. to go mm. that wasn't a place that you just, <clears throat> well, if I just knew more. And I remember thinking the answer to a whole series of experiences I had wasn't if I just knew more, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like if I could just be more informed or just smarter, but as the moment I, and I started realizing but if I would can be confronted with something and then I would sit, I, I started saying I would sink down into my heart. There was total clarity. Mm. So I noticed in my inbox, I'd be, there'd be an email and it had some question or some thing to work out. And I'd be like, well, here, duh, duh. but then I would almost like ask heart mm -hmm. and heart yeah. had a whole level of clarity. Mm. Yes. That's so then good. And I began to notice that so many people that I would interact with would have a question, but mm -hmm. when I would say, well, well you, what's on top of your heart? Just come up with like spatial images. What, what's on top yeah. of your heart? Don't, don't think your way, just see if you could, that people would have had deep knowing. Ooh. And then I realized, oh, if you have, you've had about 1600 years of something called the doctrine of original sin from Augustine, who also came up with just war theory. Here's when it's okay to kill people. But nevertheless, oh. in Western culture, this isn't even religious, in Western culture, this idea that we are at our deepest selves off, wrong, sinful, etc. Right. Um, 
has been in the blo- in the in the water for about 1600 years mm. but then i noticed how many people would say something like i knew that thing was whatever mm. but everybody around me told me not it's yeah. not a big deal and then later i knew it i then i found out the thing was a fraud it was a scam mm. whatever um mm. and i just noticed with kristen how often she knew something Mm-hmm. But she had this cultural deference to, well, so and so's the expert. So and so went to an Ivy League school, right? So and so. And I just noticed how many times I'd be like, you said this seven years ago. Mm. That there is actually, there is a deep knowing that we all possess, or, or the Christ wisdom, mm. also called intuition. Yeah, right, right, right. That when you have picked up in the air do not whatever you do don't trust your deepest self yeah. right which goes back megan to a reading of the scriptures that begins right. in chapter three of genesis not chapter one it begins with people making a mess of things not how the story begins which is goodness and blessing mm. uh, right so right so totally cultural, there there is a deep knowing we all possess mm. the christ in you the christ in me and heart actually knows so often and then this deep knowing has been violated so many times. The world's a mess. Yeah. And yep. yet so many people now are looking around going, we knew that this obsessive consumer market ideology, industrial mm-hmm. military complex that rapes and exploits the earth. Mm-hmm. We knew a while ago, this thing was headed off a cliff. Yeah. <laughs> yep. We knew yep. this a long time ago. So uh, all that is the answer to the question. And uh, yeah, there was a, yeah, like, oh, mm-hmm. this is the next thing then. Well, I moved you're just... so much slower than I did. I'm so much more interested when people start like, to, uh, stop, oh, wait, 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 wait. What's really, like, I'm just the chatter. I can't do chatter. Yeah. Yeah, like, totally. I want to connect soul to soul. Mm. Yeah. What you described is so much of, um, it actually lines up super well. I'm doing a bunch of somatic therapy, which oh, is yes. like, Yes. Just an incredible, like, spatial. It's like bringing the things that are invisible into, like, this spatial awareness of your being. And there's actually an exercise of, like, imagining an elevator going down from your mind into your heart. Oh, no way. That's like an actual, like, mental there we exercise. Go. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. And I bet you get c- incredible clarity. It's, it is, um, yeah. Yep. Yeah. There's been a lot there. A lot there. I find myself, mm-hmm. even in the past, what is it, year and a half? pausing so mm-hmm. often mm-hmm. before I speak when I'm listening to someone mm-hmm. I'll ask a clear like you know when someone's chatting away and you're just like just and and I notice now I'll just st- I'm sorry what did you mean by that yeah just because like otherwise we're just like minds talking to minds this person chatters this person chatters <sighs> what, what did you mean by that and suddenly the conversation and we're in some completely different place just because of not letting stuff fly by um yep yeah yeah that's yeah mm. amazing our dad does that and it's so unnerving i'm like just say something and then he's very <laughs> profound you mean yeah. when he just sits with it and listens? when he pa- yeah he just like pauses <laughs> like oh my gosh and it does something um, to you it does something something in the pause makes you uncomfortable <laughs> yeah um do we have do time we- for another question or no yeah let's do one more okay okay I have um, one. Megan, oh, do it. Megan makes. has one. I have one. Okay. I think this is really interesting. This is from Angie Hawkins. It says, question for Rob. What does it mean for you now to have a relationship with God? As I have gone through my own deconstruction, something I'm still struggling with is, does God actually care about me as an individual? This idea was so core to my spirituality growing up and frankly, very comforting. Now I think God is more interested in our common shared growth and us as people us making all things new and working towards justice. But if I'm honest, something in me laments that relationship I feel like I once had with the God that I was taught cared about each and every little thing in my life. Uh, What was her name? Angie Hawkins, I guess. Angie? Yeah, Angie, I've noticed a number of people, this question has come up often where a person is Mm -hmm. like, I can't do the old mythological old man in the sky Right. That doesn't work anymore. And I have this greater sense of connection and justice and peace and love and flow. Mm. 
but something got something personal got lost in making yeah. a much needed evolution. So I always begin in the book, actually, Angie, a number of times, I just say it's always personal. Yeah. So it's always personal. And if, and then if there's an image or metaphor that helps, take it, take it. it, it the divine is beyond form. All you have. Okay. So the word parable means to place beside. So the divine is beyond form. Mm -hmm. If there is ultimate reality, it won't just be formless as opposed to form. It will be that which is beyond the categories of form and formless. How are we doing, everybody? So <laughs> all you will have is taking something you have experienced and placing it beside the divine. So that's a parable is to place beside. The kingdom of God is like, God is like a mother. God is like a father. God is like a wind. God, mm -hmm. all, all you have is taking familiarity and experiences you have gone through and placing them beside. Because the moment the divine exists conceptually, you have some, an image, mm -hmm. that can't be the divine because the divine will have to be source of everything, will have to be not just one more category. This is why, by the way, you all, when you heard people in the past prove the existence of God, when you heard somebody tried to prove the existence of God, something within you felt like they were denying that God. Mm -hmm. yeah, you, just, right. you just proved something. You just lost mm, in yeah. your desires mm -hmm. because whatever it is, if it could be proved, it wouldn't be what you think it is. So, right. so Angie, if there's some image that works, she mm. walks with me. She talks mm. to me. Um, uh, the universe is on my side. If there's some images that works, mm. take it. Sure, those old, some of those old hymns feel completely old and sort of like you might as well be riding around in a horse and buggy. But if the image works, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Take it. I'll take all the help I can get. Um, <laughs> even like someone must really love. There's a, an old teacher who's since passed on who used to drive around the country in a pickup truck named Dwight Pryor. And I watched him when somebody would come up to him and tell him how much they loved his teaching. He would say, God must really love you. <laughs> That's what? what he said. God, anytime somebody <laughs> loved his work, he would say, God must really love you. Like, wow. like, like uh, something good happened, you must really be loved by somebody somewhere. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. And so you can like shoot holes in that and be like, well, theologically, that just is a three. Or you can just go, yeah. what a lovely bit of poetry that mm -hmm. resonates at some level. Yeah. So and it's, good. it's always going to be personal, Angie. It's mm -hmm. always going to be, it's always, all stuff is very personal. There's no other way we can encounter any of it. Even yeah. in her lovely question about the communal injustice and all that, there's mm -hmm. no way even to think or process that other than your own individual consciousness. Mm -hmm. It's always going to be deeply intimate and personal. Yeah. It, there, the, you said this in the book and it really, really got me. It's, God is not a question of what may or may not be up there, above or out there. God is what we are unquestionably in. We all agree on this being we're experiencing. Yes, yes. So the good. One, so yes. good. Awareness is the one great absolute. The one thing everybody can agree on is absolute is consciousness. We're all mm -hmm. here having this experience. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love doing this with you all. Wow, you are amazing. <laughs> Thank you so much. I, seriously, Such I was so honor. honored. I was so honored. What you, the, the noise that you people make just moves <laughs> me. So the fact that Thank you. we could do this. And then someday, maybe we'll like travel and see each other again in, in, you know, yes, great. Please. in actual spaces. Okay. Or I'll finally get to come to a show. Um, <laughs> yeah, that would be awesome. Literally. Whenever that happens, you're welcome. I know, anytime. doesn't it? Do you, the other day I was walking the dog in the morning and I got tears in my eyes thinking about how much I love the live. Yes, event. I know. We looked Likewise. at pictures for the anniversary and I had, I was just like, this is just so yeah, good. What, like, a, what a gift oh, to get to do that. I was like, if someday in a new world, whenever, there's actually like a room full of people and I get to go 
I'll be like, guys. Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking how grateful all of us are going to be. We're going to be like, oh, this yeah. is amazing. Right, <laughs> right. You guys are going to be like, in between every song, looking at each other like, this is, oh, yeah. this is happening. <laughs> Absolutely. It's going to be so oh, good. Uh, thank you. Thank you. And thank you, Powell, City awesome. of Books, and um, all the people who were with us. Thanks, yeah, Bill. thank you everyone yeah, for coming. Th thank you all for a terrific conversation. It was it was great to hear it. Mm. And uh, and thank you to everyone in the audience uh, for joining us at this event. And it was a pleasure to host Rob Bell and the band Joseph. Please consider purchasing a copy of Rob's book, Everything is Spiritual, by visiting Do us it. at powells.com. And while you're there, please be sure to check out our lineup of other upcoming virtual events. And we look forward to seeing you at another one soon. So Rob, Egan, Alice, and Natalie, thanks again. We're really grateful. And, and take care. Thank you. Are you going to put this so online? Much. Is this going to re this is, I see it's recording. Are you going to put this online? Yeah, in a couple of days. Oh, great. It'll be, on, it'll be on our YouTube channel. Wonderful. Amazing. Nice. Great. great. Thank you. Yeah, have a great night. Bye, Rob. Bye, everybody. Good with you. Thank you so Bye, much. Sisters. Bye. Much love. Bye. Appreciate Talk again you. Soon.